Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the volume of a sphere and a hemisphere. We'll start with the regular sphere first. What is a sphere? A sphere is basically a ball. And in a sphere, if you go to the center of it, the distance from the center to any point on the periphery of that sphere should be the same. And that distance is the radius. Okay? A good example of something that at least approximates a sphere is a planet or a star. This is our sun. And so we can calculate the volume of that sphere uh, using the radius. And it's actually a fairly simple calculation. So in our first problem, we want to find the volume of the sphere shown to the left, assuming that the diameter of the sphere is 10 millimeters. Now, if the diameter is 10 millimeters, remember that the radius, r, is half of the diameter. So if the diameter is 10, the radius would be 5 millimeters. Now, here is the formula for the volume of the sphere. The volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Unfortunately, this is a formula that's not really intuitive. It, you know, doesn't really, it's not really a good way to derive it mentally. So you kind of just have to memorize this. But all we're going to do is plug in r equals 5. So the volume would be 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. And the radius is 5, so this is 5 cubed. All right? Um, we can more or less pull the 5 cubed up here and get the volume is 4 times 5 cubed over 3 times pi. Uh, 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, which is actually 125. And if we multiply 125 times 4, that'll actually get us 500. And so we have a 500 over 3 times pi. Now, theoretically, you could get this as a decimal. Um, that's probably not advisable because this is a more exact number. 500 is not divisible by 3. In fact, because you'd be dividing by 3, you would get some kind of repeating decimal that would go off to infinity. Okay? Um, so I would not advise doing that. Just leave it as 500 over 3 pi. And then the units are in millimeters cubed. And that's because our length units are millimeters and volume units are cubic. So cubic millimeters or millimeters cubed. I could just for form, I could equivalently put this pi up on the numerator of the fraction and give you 500 pi over 3 cubic millimeters. That would also be correct. The point is just getting to something that looks like this. How you actually want to present the answer is up to you. But that's how you calculate the volume of a sphere. Really, all you need are the formula and the radius. Now, if you were to take the sphere and cut it in half, so this is kind of like if you took a grapefruit some people like to put sugar on grapefruit, but you have to cut it with a knife in half first. So if you just take half of the sphere, whether it's the top or the bottom, that's a hemisphere. So for this part of the problem, we're going to find the volume of the hemisphere shown to the left, assuming the diameter is still 10 millimeters. Now, one way, and this is actually the best way to go about doing this for basic geometry purposes, is don't think of it as a hemisphere at first. Consider it as a whole sphere. Okay, how would you calculate this if it were the whole sphere? Well, you would do exactly what we just did. You have the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The radius is 5 millimeters. And so it would just be, again, 500 pi over 3. That's exactly what we got when we calculated the sphere up at top. But if you recognize that a hemisphere is half of a sphere, then you just take whatever you got and multiply it by a half or you could think of it as dividing by 2. If you multiply 500 pi over 3 times a half, you get 250 pi over 3, because 250 is half of 500. And so the volume of the hemisphere is just 250 pi over 3 cubic millimeters. And this, again, is because a hemisphere is one half of a sphere. All right? So, Hopefully this makes sense for calculating the volume of a sphere. In the next video, we're going to calculate the surface area of a sphere and then also the surface area of a hemisphere. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.